Do not allow anybody to make you feel like, well, if I grow something in a baby pool, there might be a chemical in that. I'm gonna die. You're gonna die of starvation first. So, hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We're gonna have some real talk. I think we've had a lot of that lately. I think you need more. I wanna say more. Let's talk about some of this that I've got going on back here. Wait a minute, Patera, why are you buying stuff from Walmart? Aren't you a homesteader? <laughs> you gotta love people like that. Now, I'm not, I'm not making this video, and that's not me talking like that because somebody has said something to me like recently, which is why I'm making this video. No, I'm actually concerned for you. And I am, am bouncing off of comments or questions by people because y'all are getting some bad advice from somewhere uh, or being misled or getting confused. Somebody's confusing you. And so I, it's easier for me just to make a video about a subject than it is to just have, you know, 45 responses typed out on, you know, a comment or in, on Facebook or whatever. Folks, Let's talk about what matters right now. Let's talk about what you need to be doing. Now, again, this is my opinion on my channel. So if that's what you wanna hear, you're gonna hear it. If you don't agree with me, well, you know, I'm not your girl, so go somewhere else. And I don't mean that to be ugly. I'm just saying we're not gonna waste each other's time. But you know what? I'm gonna bet you a sprinkled donut from Krispy Kreme that if you got really hungry enough, you're not gonna care where the corn came from. You're just gonna wanna fill your belly. We are so spoiled. We are spoiled rotten. And so I wanna clarify what I'm saying here by, by mentioning that because I don't understand. I, I do understand because I, I, I see it, I live it too. We're spoiled rotten. We actually have the option still to be judgmental on whether or not somebody's drinking organic milk or milk that's not. Cow milk, soy milk, this, that, that, that. Do you realize, I think you do, I hope you do, that a lot of people around the world have never had these types of options. And so therefore, they are just thankful to have anything. And do you know that your great, great, great grandmother was the same way? Most of our great, 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 great grandmother, even our great, great, my Nana as a kid. I'm gonna mention her again because see, she's still alive and she can talk about anything that I'm talking about, right? What I'm about to mention. They didn't care. They just wanted to eat back in the 30s and in the 40s. People were so depressed, suppressed, and you know, they grew their own foods, but at the same time, they didn't turn food down. And they certainly didn't put others down for trying to feed themselves or for growing food how they could grow it or feeding their babies. That nonsense needs to stop. So let's show you the reality here in the kitchen of the homesteader. So I dehydrated this. I didn't grow one single bit of it. This is a, a, a whole, these are, it's two actually, two bags of great value broccoli stir fry and it is delicious. And I was so happy to grab a few bags and I tried it and it was so good. I'm I have dehydrated two and I'm going to vacuum seal it. I'm gonna vacuum seal it a little bit later when I get it out. I just, put, I literally just put this in the jar this morning, okay? This old jar and I'm going to, and it's going on my shelf. Did I grow it? Not one bit. Oh my word, last year I did videos and showed all kinds of beautiful images of these pickles and they have turned out beautiful. I love growing my own cucumbers. Uh, I have videos on it and I love canning. Have a whole bunch of these, love it. But you know what? I'm no fool, I'm no dummy. If I get a good deal on pickles, because I love pickles, I think they're important to have in a pantry, pickled goods. Guess what? I'm going to buy it. Lord, Jeb, come on in here. Je Jeb, Patera's talking about Campbell's soup again. Jeb, Jeb, get in. Jeb, hey, hey, Jeb, Patera's back on. Yeah, she's talking about your favorite soup, your Campbell's soup. 
Yeah, the ones I, I got them on sale at the UGO. That's right. Yes, the Campbell, the vegetable beef. Yeah, she's got them on her. She, she loves that stuff. She thinks you should have it in your pantry because it's a, a backup plan for a backup plan. Absolutely. Campbell's soup. You know, Tara's also telling you right. Hey, Jeb. Jeb, are you listening? Hey. Tara makes her own vegetable beef stews and soups and hamburger soups with vegetables and beefs. But she also believes that you should have a plan B, C, D, go all the way down the alphabet if you need to, because that's what smart people do. Look here, there's even some dust. Looky there, look at, whoo. Tara's got a little bit of dust on her homegrown, homemade grape juice. But at the same time, Patera has some in the freezer. She didn't grow those oranges. There's no shame in this game. So you can grow your own, you can can your own, but you know what? Having some type of fruit juice or option in the background as a plan B or C or D is a smart thing also. Now, let me tell you, I, can, I, I can't do too many things very well or very good or whatever, but I can make some mean chili and I can can it too. That's right, homemade, wonderful chili, made and put on the shelf, ready to rock and roll, however which way I want to do it. Just to have the chili plain, put it on my Indian tacos, however you want to do that. But you know what? Yesterday I ran into Aldi. I bought their chili. Sure did. Oh, 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 Missouri Wonders. I grow Trail of Tears, Missouri Wonders, Roma 2, Cherokee Wax Beans, uh, Contenders, and Half Runners. I grow every one of them beans. I do. I grow every single one of these beans. But you know what? My Nana has a, just, she has a hankering for Allen's. And so I grew up with her a lot of times. She taught me how to cook up these wonderful Italian flat beans. Now, I, I grow these types of beans. They're very similar, the Roma 2's. But you know what? What if my crop fails? What if some, a hailstorm comes through and wipes out my beans? Guess what? We got green beans on the shelf. Mm. The corn that I grew last year was so phenomenal that I would literally just pop it right off the stalk and I would stand there and eat it right there in the field. That is how good this corn is. It's fine gold. But you know what? You never know when a deer or 20 might come through and wipe you out. So you know what? That delicious thing right there has a backup beyond a backup because this is what real people thinking ahead, moms that are trying to protect their investment in their pantry so that they know that they are gonna be feeding their children, this is what we do. Now, Taryn, why in the dickens would you ever, ever buy chicken with all them chickens you have? Don't you know how to put it up? Yep, I sure do, all day long. You can learn too. Remember, you pressure can your meats. You don't water bath them, just wanna sprinkle that in. But you know what? You know what? I'm not giving away my jars. I'm keeping those fine things. So if I wanna help a neighbor or all kinds of different scenarios, yep. I've got some chicken on the shelf that is Keystone. Now, wait a minute. Why? Are, what about what about jams and jellies? You know, all that stuff you buy at the store just got too much sugar in it. And they might have used a fertilizer. And what'd they spray on them strawberries? Well, I have my own too. But see, I believe that having a variety matters. I think that having those plan B's and C's matter. And I'm not gonna feel guilty about it at all because when it comes down to brass tacks and your belly is grumbling, nobody's gonna ask you those questions. They are gonna be so thankful that you were able to make that homemade bread and that old peanut butter that you put back that you got from wherever and you just so happen to have one jar of Food Lion's Strawberry preserves. Thank the Lord. Yep, 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 yep. 
I'm gonna be pressure canning beans tonight. Yeah, every single one of these beans right here is they're just soaking it up. They're getting soft and getting ready for the canner. That is the plan because I do love my own home cooked, homegrown beans. Now these were not homegrown per se, but a lot of them are here. But uh, these, no, I got them at Aldi. They're non-GMO. I got them for a great price. I'm not gonna argue about it. Cause you know what? They're gonna go on my shelf. But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Home style, baby. We're getting homey with you. Home style, Dakota, you know that's Aldi. Why would you not? Y'all, even in a great situation, there are days that you're just plum tired. Or you know what? You gotta whip up something to go to the, you know, to the barbecue. Grab you two of these, put you a little mustard, put you a little more brown sugar in that, slice you some onion, boom, you've got a great dish to take to the barbecue. See, we have variety and versatility in all that we do. This is the way it's done here. The point is, there is no shame in the game of doing everything that you can to make sure you have a variety of things in your pantry, in your refrigerator, in your freezer, however which way you want to put food underneath your bed for all I care. Folks, do not let people on any type of social media, whether it's a YouTube channel, whether it's a blog, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a magazine, or just by some numbskull that you know, make you feel guilty because you're choosing the Aldi chili today over that, okay? The important thing here is for people to understand that food, if you have it, any which way you can get it, regardless of what you think about how it should be grown or who should grow it or who's your mama, is a blessing from the Lord. There's more than likely coming a time very soon that a lot of us are not going to be able to be so cute and nitpicky over the things that we eat. If you want to maintain that attitude, you best get busy and be stalking it to the ceiling, sweetheart, because there, every which way you go, you're being warned about food shortage, food shortage, food shortage. And people are figuring it out. People are stocking up. People are going for what they should be going for. That's a lot of competition. We've been talking about this for weeks. But if you are going to be growing food or buying food, do not, you don't answer to anybody. Now, if you wanna, if, if, if you have choices that you prefer to make, like I said, you better get busy. But my point here is, I'm sick and tired of people putting down other people for the ways in which they're trying to do the very best they can to take care of themselves and their children. Do not listen to anybody that is trying to mislead you, whether they mean to or not, into thinking that you're gonna go today from an apartment to suddenly a 20 acre farm and you're gonna have food for the next 10 years. There are no guarantees in this life. I've been doing this a long time. I've had a lot of success. I've had a lot of failure. There are a lot of unforeseen circumstances coming your way, coming my way. And the only way that you know that you will most, most likely get through them is if you're thinking ahead, preparing ahead. One extra jar of this or one extra jar of that, whether you grew it or not, is not important. It's the, it's the fact that you have it. And let me tell you something else. No, I do not grow the majority of my food with any type of chemical fertilizer. I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that I haven't used it before because I have. I've used it on corn. I've told you I've used, I've tried different methods to see what worked. And I found that certain things work just as good as other others. But here's my point. I haven't, I haven't. Because anybody that's trying to tell you right now that, see, the majority of the world doesn't grow food. We've already discussed this before in a very recent yesterday, day four videos. The majority of people, probably a lot of you, and don't get upset with me, you don't grow food, okay? Or you're just now starting to learn. Do not allow anybody to make you feel like, 
well, if I grow something in a baby pool, there might be a chemical in that. I'm going to die. You're going to die of starvation first. Well, if I don't get chickens and 12 goats and collect the manure for the next, uh, you know, month to four months, um, then, I, you know, I, I can't, I, I, that if I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm bad, bad if I go buy, a tr uh, you know, 10, 10, 10 or uh, 15, 15, 15 or triple, I, I, I'm doing bad. No, you're going to starve because, see, the time that you're waiting for your chickens to uh, give you all that poop that's supposed to sit up, you know, three, four months, six months, guess what? By then, we're going to be long into fall. You just missed the entire growing season, honey. So, what I'm telling you is, is I'm getting so fired up, I hit the button. What I'm telling you is, y'all, the important thing right now is to have food and to grow food and to use the brain that God and Granny gave you and do what you need to do right now. If you feel that it is that it is very imperative for you to get busy growing food, you push forward and do whatever you need to to get through this season and probably probably 2023 also at a minimum with the way things are looking by the way everything is shaping up. Miracles can come, miracles can happen. Let's pray for that right now. Moms, don't apologize. And if you're paying attention, you're going to understand that you need to be doing whatever you need to do to get it in the ground and get it growing and go and press forward. You will learn as you go. This is really great advice for new gardeners and homesteaders, um, you know, that, that this is their first year, their second year. I think a lot of new newbies get caught up in watching or trying to listen to learn, which is good. But you have to understand, how long has that person been doing that? Do, do they do anything else? They don't work a job. Okay, so they're, they're at their farm 24-7. Does their wife work? Do they homeschool? Do they have kids? Where do they live? What's their climate? How do things grow there? Oh, they live in Florida and you live in Montana. Their scenario doesn't apply to you. But see, newbies don't know that. I didn't either. You just have to learn as you go. But if your motivation is to stalk your pantry and to try to grow food to continue to stalk your pantry so you and your babies can eat, this is great. Do it. This is also fantastic. Do it. If you have never learned or done anything with compost and manures and all of these things in your life, let's get through this season. Let's get through this year. Put you a bag away. If you decide not to use it, okay, you've got it. You know what? You may not use this. You may not. But you may have some neighbors down the road that would take this jar of fertilizer. One pickle jar of fertilizer that you're just giving away might save somebody's life. Might save somebody's life. That's the goal right now. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. I love y'all. I know I got a little rantish. <laughs> I get fired up because I don't want people to be misled and I see it and they're coming to me like, Tara, I'm being told that this and this, stop. Stop and go stock your pantry and grow your gardens now. I love you. We'll see you on the next video.